As a Jewish orphan, my mother survived the Holocaust in constant hiding among farmers and Catholic nuns in rural areas of provincial France. Later, as a naturalized citizen of the United States, she developed an affinity for French provincial antiques and became a sophisticated collector, perhaps to provide a link with the few positive aspects of her youth in France. Our home became tastefully furnished with distinctive European period pieces. In 1967, my mother discovered an antique store in Winnetka where she bought this eight foot tall French long case clock. Though the clockwork was made around 1850, the handcrafted inlaid wood case is older, dating from about 1780. This type of clock is known as a Morbier clock, a distinctive clock type that evolved over a 150 year period in the shops of several clock makers in the Franche Comte region near the small village of Morbier, close to the Swiss border. Two weights powered by gravity drive the clock. The natural period of the brass-faced pendulum regulates the time. The long clock case accommodates the gradual fall of the weights over the course of a week between each winding. One weight powers the clock, the other powers the resonator chime. The nature of this antique clockwork permits accuracy at best only to within approximately one minute per week. However, this is not a big problem as the clock must always be reset weekly at the time of winding when the weights are temporarily removed. This particular clock mechanism is based upon a crown wheel escapement, also known as a verge escapement. This is one of the oldest known clock mechanisms, originating in the 14th century. The functioning is very simple, and also quite clever. The rotation of the crown is driven by the pull of a falling weight linked to the crown through a sequence of brass gears. Two paddles, or pallets, engage the teeth of the crown on opposite sides of the crown. These pallets rock back and forth together through a direct mechanical linkage to the pendulum. Although it appears that the pallets are pushing the crown, in fact, the opposite is occurring. The teeth of the rotating crown actually repeatedly push the pallets with a small nudge, exactly as one might boost a child on a swing to keep it going. This nudge is just enough to overcome the friction within the pendulum mechanism and allow it to remain in motion. The clever part of this design is that the second pallet, opposite the one currently being pushed, swings into position at precisely the proper moment to block a different tooth of the crown before that second pallet in turn is pushed. This blocking thus permits the crown rotation to advance only one tooth at a time with each swing of the pendulum. The sequential tapping of the teeth of the escapement wheel against the pallets creates the distinctive tick-tock sound of the clock. The rotating crown wheel, modulated in this fashion, is linked through gearing to the hands of the clock, which display the ever-advancing time. Subtle adjustments in the length of the pendulum arm, made by raising or lowering the weight in tiny increments, permit calibration of the clock. Morbier clocks ring or chime the hour count at two minutes before each hour, and once again exactly upon the hour, each hour of the day. Typically, Morbier clocks also chime once upon the half hour. A clock such as this is unique with its own personality and idiosyncrasies. This particular clock will randomly sound an irregularly syncopated chime pattern for a few of the hours every day. This clock is also very sensitive. Both the case and the clock itself must be separately shimmed in order to keep it running. When my mother lived in the John Hancock building in Chicago, on windy days the building would sway and the clock would stop. Through the years, my mother would faithfully wind and reset the clock every week. Upon her death, 
The clock sat quietly in her apartment. The pendulum remained dormant. Since inheriting the clock, I have cared for it in my home, winding the strings, resetting the time, and adjusting the rate. It serves as a reminder of my connection to my mother and to her past. As I grow older, with each tick of the clock, I wonder to myself, who will become the next custodian of the clock?